Okay, so we're doing some more basic stuff with vectors again here. Um, and in this case, what we want to do is we're, we're given two points and they're connected by a vector and we want to know, okay, if that's all we have are, are those points, how can we find the components of the vector? All right, that's the basic idea. Now, this specific question wants not only those Cartesian components, but it says the magnitude and the direction cosines. So we'll do that too, okay? Now, what we want to do is we want to think about, when we're doing this, we want to think about the idea of change. Okay, so let me tell you what uh, what I'm talking about here. Whenever we talk about change, you need to sort of burn it into your head that change is going to be, uh, we use the delta symbol, and it's final minus initial. Okay, it's always that, always final minus initial. Now that's super important moving forward um, in all of your static stuff. And then when we get into dynamics and in physics too, final minus initial. And so with our vector, we start at some initial point down here at A, and then we've got a final point up here at B. So if we define B and we define A, um, then we can figure out what the deltas are that go along with that. So let's start with B. Oops, my bad, it's not a vector. It's just a point. And the tricky part, the only part about these that's tricky is making sure you read the graph correctly, okay? So point B, um, always take it one piece at a time. Be very methodical, that's gonna help you out. All right, so like we start with X. So we got to go past the origin. We got to go into it. All right, and so we're going into it a distance of three. And I know that because over of this over here right there. So that's how I know that my X coordinate is going to be three. And then I've got my, my Y coordinate is how far over I've come, like this, and so that's four. And then my Z coordinate is how far up I've gone, and that one is three, okay? Just like that, okay? Now again, take your time when you're doing this. <clears throat> Be very careful um, so you can track uh, what you're doing. Now let's do the point A. And so let's think about what's happening with my X. And we've come forward from the ZY plane, a distance of three. So we've got three there. And then um, my Y component. All right, as I'm over, whoo, sorry, wrong point. I'm over a distance two with that one. And then finally my Z, we're actually in the floor. So we're in the XY plane on that one. So we'll just put a zero in for that guy, all right? Now, some of you may have figured out that, that I did make a mistake in there when I was reading through this. So whenever you wanna do, whenever you're doing these, you know, always double check yourself, okay? Which is how I figured out that I made a mistake. And I figured that out because I knew when I put the X component for A, I put three but it also put three for B, but they're not in the same place. And that's because it's negative three on this one, okay? So it's behind the uh, ZY plane and point A is in front of the ZY plane. All right, now, once we have those, everything's pretty straightforward because we want to do our delta. So this is our end point that's final. This is initial. And so all we really need to do here is go final minus initial. So I've got minus three, minus three, comma, four. Oh, I screwed up with my Y also. Sorry about that. This, this guy is negative here. Boop. Okay, four minus a minus two, 
comma three minus zero. And so then our R, which is defined from A to B, we're looking at yeah, minus six, six and three. Okay. Now when you get that, okay, especially while you're you know practicing and learning and all that stuff, double check on this thing. Okay. So what this tells us is that our vector moves backwards six along the x-axis. Okay. And so we're gonna check. Okay, so we're here, it's three back to zero, it's another three, then um, to the other point. Okay, so that checks out and we're going in the negative direction. Let's check out Y. So Y starts out over here, negative two. It's got to go up two and then up four more. So six checks out. And then the Z component, we're in the floor, which is zero, and we're going to go up to three. So that one checks out as well. Okay. All righty. So now let's go ahead and get our magnitude. Okay, so R is a magnitude. And remember, uh, my notation, when if I just write R, what, what I mean there is it's the magnitude of my vector R. So R without the hat on it is uh, the magnitude of the vector. So the magnitude then we're looking at minus six squared plus six squared plus three squared and uh, run the numbers on those and what you get is nine okay and so there's our there's our magnitude okay all right i need to make just a little bit of room here so i'm going to see if i can move these things over here and that has monkeyed around with my highlighting, which we don't need our highlighting right now anyway. Okay, so now we want to get the direction cosines. And since we've got the magnitude and we have all of our components, that turns out to be super easy to do. Let me pick a fun color here. All right, so let's do these ones in green. And so the cosine of alpha is going to be the x component of r, which is negative 6, divided by the magnitude, which is 9. Okay. And um, we'll keep going here. Cosine beta then is going to be positive 6 over 9. And the cosine of gamma is going to be 3 over 9. Okay, so then you can just run those on your calculator, figure out what alpha, beta, and gamma are, and that's going to work out for you. Okay, now cosine's a nice function. Uh, so when you do uh, negative on it, uh, usually your calculator is going to return the proper angle. Um, so, I mean, full, it'll return 110 instead of negative 80 or something like that. Sine function is the one you got to watch out for um, in terms of using your calculator and what's it going to give you? Is it going to give you quadrant one or quadrant four? That's what sine does. But cosine inverse always gives you quadrant one or quadrant three. So uh, one, two, quadrant one or quadrant two. So it's easier to deal with. Let's look at another one of these. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we, we've got a pole and the pole is up against the wall. And our job ultimately is to figure out what's that angle between the corner and the pole. Okay. What is that angle down there? So right down there, what is theta going to turn out to be? Now we'll do this exactly the same way. And so we're going to use our starting point, our initial point as A and our final point as B just like this. So we need to define A and B. <clears throat> and let's do B first, because that'll help with our subtraction. So the point B 
turns out to be. Okay, so x, the x position of b is in the zy wall there, and which is 0. The y position, all right, it's sort of forward down the wall, a distance of 2. And then it's up along the wall, a distance of 4. Okay, so we're in the wall, over 2, and up 4. All right, now let's do point A. Point A, what we're dealing with then is x is 4, and it's sitting there right, right on the x-axis, which, which means that the other two components are 0. Okay, just like so. So let's uh, turn this baby into a vector. We'll call it R. And we're going to do final minus initial. So 0 minus 4 gives us negative 4. 2 minus 0 gives us a 2. And 4 minus 0 gives us a 4. Okay. So now let's look at our picture and make sure that, that, uh, that it looks correct. And so what we're saying there with our vector r is that we're going towards the towards the origin, negative 4, and then away 2 and away 4. All right. Boom, boom, boom. And that works out too. Okay. All right. So to get that angle theta, what we're actually going to do is we're going to use um, – there's there's a couple ways we could do it, but the way we're going to do it is with our direction cosine. So let me show you what I mean here. The angle from positive x to our vector is alpha, like that. And we could see alpha and theta are related. Those are uh, supplementary angles. I think that's the correct term, which means that... Um, alpha plus theta, so 180 degrees, so theta is going to be 180 minus alpha. So if we had alpha, then we're in business, okay? So can we get alpha? Of course, of course we can get alpha. So cosine of alpha is going to just be that x component, which is negative 4, over our magnitude. Uh-oh, we got to go back and grab the magnitude. Forgot about that. So our magnitude, we're looking at 16 plus 4 plus 16. And if you run that on your calculator, that turns out to be 6. 16 and 16 is 32, plus 4 is 36, square root of that is 6. All right, it all pans out, checks out. So anyway, back to cosine alpha, we got negative, oops, 4 over 6. And so alpha turns out to be 131.8 degrees. And so now that we know that, you can just, I'll let you subtract it uh, yourself there, and you can figure out what the angle of theta is, okay? Here we go. So direction cosines, not so crazy or, or useless after all.